Hey, good morning. It is good to be back with you. Uh, what a wonderful week my family and I had on vacation this past week. I'm so thankful for a team of, of worship, uh, our worship team. And Les, thank you so much for your leadership. They didn't just come and like fill in the gap. Like They come and led you all in Christ-exalting worship. So I'm so thankful for the folks that led last week, the volunteers in the balcony in the broadcast room. Let's give them a hand this morning. It looks a little bit different up here. There's a, something going on this week. You'll hear more about it as we go through this morning's service. Uh, but regardless of the week's activities past and the week's activities future, we're called to worship and gather, uh, to gather and worship the name of Jesus together. So let's stand and do that this morning as we come together. I want to start in, in, in the Word this morning. 1 Peter chapter 2. Well, let me get to chapter 2. Peter writes, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Church, as we gather to worship this morning, let's worship in remembrance of that mercy, that it's new each morning, and the hope that we have in the name of Jesus together. I was buried my shame Who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you I was breathing but not Oh 
there are things a little different up here today. And if you walk around the church, seeing things a little bit different. This is Bible School Week, and I'm so excited. I am just, I cannot believe we're finally here. And uh, just ready to have an awesome, awesome week sharing the love of Christ with all kinds of kiddos and adults and teenagers and whoever comes through our door. It's really for everybody. And so uh, today we're celebrating and kicking it off. We're, so we begin tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. And we'll be going through noon every day until Thursday. And uh, this year the theme is called Spark Studios. And it's all about um, how God has created us in his image. And he's given us all gifts and given us all talents. And as you can see up here... There's probably something that you might really enjoy. You might like to color. You might like to paint. You might like to sing. You might like to play instruments. You might even like to play tinker toys if you didn't know what those were. And uh, whatever it might be, God has created all of us to share his love and his works and his good news in a variety of ways. And we're going to show kids how they can use their gifts and talents to show their love for God and their love for God to others this week. And hopefully, we I know we're going to probably have kids in here that have never experienced that love personally. And right now, just in this whole time, I've been praying that God will open those doors and open those hearts for those kids that need Jesus and those families that need Jesus, because that's what it's all about. This is that one time during our year that we can intentionally just pour into whoever comes in those doors. And that's why I am so excited. And, uh, but they're going to, our Kind of our theme, you see it up there, is Christ, created in Christ's design for God's purpose. And we do have a verse, I think. Is there a verse up there? Yeah. Well, there it is. So this is our theme verse for this week. And I would like for all of you to read it with me, please. Here we go. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared ahead of time for us to do. Ephesians 2.10, and that's going to be the, the main memory verse that they're going to be learning this week, along with a lot of other bonus verses through the week, but that is our theme. We're created in him and to do his good works, and this would not take place without a lot of people. And people that have given of their time, of their talents, people that are going to be teaching, people that are bringing goodies, people that are helping with snack and rec. I've got a group that's getting ready to come up here in just one minute and share with you the theme song uh, for our week. So I need to ask a favor of you. I want everybody out here to show me the biggest smile you have and a sense of excitement on your face because they're just a little bit nervous, okay? So, but anyway, um, in just a minute, I'm going to have this crew uh, come up here. I've got an awesome group of young ladies and awesome, the ones that will be up here and as well as Miss Grace and Hash that are going to be helping me lead worship rally every uh, morning. And uh, I'm just so thankful for all of them willing to give their time and all of that. So uh, in your, if you get a, a bulletin, there's all kinds of wonderful announcements in there. There's the uh, Connect card as well. But I want wanted to point something out that's on the back of the connect card. There is a um, something that you can pray for every day about Bible school. So I would encourage you to tear that off and put it somewhere where you'll see it every single day and start praying for what's going to happen. Pray for our leaders. Pray for the children. Pray for the uh, families. There's just all kinds of things. I know God's at work. I know it because I've already seen it. And uh, so make sure you tear that out and be praying about that. I'm going to have a prayer with you, and then we're going to have our ladies come up and get us excited about Spark Studios. So would you pray with me? Dear Lord, I thank you so much. I thank you so much for this moment. And I thank you for the opportunity that we, we can have as a church to reach out to our community. And Lord, you have shown me big time this week 
that yes, we have mission fields that are across the waters. We have mission fields in other states. But Lord, we got mission fields right here. And I pray that you would use us this week. You would use our church to be a light to those that are in our community. That you would lay your hand on every worker, every child, every family, every person that's bringing things and dropping things off to help every person that's helped up to this point to get ready. Lay your hand on them right now. I pray that you bless them. And Lord, I just pray that you would help each one of us see how you are working in our lives. Open our hearts to you that we are living out your design and sharing that love with others. Thank you today just for worship, and we can praise you for who you are. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's stand and sing another song of worship together this morning that reminds us our identity is found in Christ alone. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving cease my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose Hold this out, again, and as he stands. Christ. 
the week. We'll find out more about some of those characters of the story. Let's stand and sing one more song together. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. Through the sun sets free, oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I ransom me, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died. For, for songs that remind us of Scripture, that use Scripture um, to bury your word into our hearts. It's a creative uh, tool that you've given us as, as believers. You created us in your own image, and you are God, creator. So you desire for us to be creative and use these things to your glory 
You didn't create us for our own glory, but you created us to bring you glory. May we do that as a body and to encourage one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, church. Well, amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. You didn't sound really excited about being in the house of the Lord. Isn't it great to be in God's house this morning? Amen. 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 Um, I just want to thank, isn't this a wonderful platform? Didn't they do a great job with all the decorations and everything? I think it looks great. Take your Bibles, turn with us to Ephesians in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 2. I love Vacation Bible School. I really do. I love it. Uh, I love it for many reasons, but I'm going to give you three and a bonus reason. I just thought of the bonus reason. The bonus reason I'm going to go ahead and give to you on the front end is how many of you remember, of course, a few years ago, they started, you know, making the Vacation Bible School snacks to go along with the theme for each day. But I remember when it was red Kool-Aid and the little cookies I could stick on my finger. Can I get an amen? Yeah. And I would drink a lot of that red Kool-Aid and eat too many of those cookies, probably why I'm a diabetic today. But anyway, it was good back in the day. But I love Vacation Bible School. Let me, I really am a diabetic. I'm not making fun of diabetics. I'm making fun of myself, all right? Well, seriously, I want to share three reasons why I love Vacation Bible School and why I hope that you will join us, whether you're serving and volunteering this week or whether you're, you're unable, but you're going to be praying for us. I love it because of the impact upon that Vacation Bible School has had upon my own life. I grew up going to Vacation Bible School every summer, every summer. Uh, in fact, I've got to brag a little bit. I know it's not really, you know, good to brag, but just hear me out. Uh, I was the king of Vacation Bible School one summer. Can you believe that? In fact, they... They really splurged. My home church went to Burger King and bought one of, they had a king and they had a queen. And whoever brought the most friends each day, the guy would be the, whoever guy brought the most would be the king and whichever lady brought the most would be the queen. And so they really splurged. They went to Burger King to get the king, the, the, the crown, right? And they, in, with glitters, wrote, uh, you know, glitter and glue, they wrote on it, Vacation Bible School King or Vacation Bible School Queen. So I got to be the Vacation Bible School King one year, and I was pretty proud of that. Um, you'd probably like to see a picture of it, wouldn't you? Well, too, too bad I didn't bring a picture this morning. You'll, you'll just have to imagine with me. I also love it most of all because it was at Vacation Bible School that God stirred my heart for salvation. I recognized that I was lost even as a child and that I was a sinner and that my sin had separated me from a holy God and that the only way that I could be saved was through Jesus Christ. And so shortly after Vacation Bible School in 1986, I spoke to my pastor and I asked the Lord to save me and become the Lord of my life. I have never been the same since. I'm not perfect, far from it, but I have never been the same since. So I love Vacation Bible School because of the impact it's had upon my own life. Number two, I love it because of the impact Vacation Bible School has upon the life of others. Um, I want you to look in your bulletin real quick, if you would. Once you, once you grab your bulletin and you open it, hold it up real quick. This is participatory. All right, good. Thank you. All right, open up your bulletin if you haven't done so already. And I want you to, the middle, the middle section there is a graphic. And I, I wanted to put it up before you on the screen, but I was afraid that you wouldn't be able to see it. So we put it inside of your bulletin. Now, these numbers are pre-COVID, okay? So they're a few years old, but I think you get the gist if you will take just a few minutes and look at the impact that, they, and they, this is just among Southern Baptist churches, okay? We're not talking about other denominations that may do Vacation Bible School. We're just talking about among Southern Baptists. These are statistics from a few years ago. 2.5 million children participated 
at VBS. And of that 2.5 million, there were over 70,000 de salvation decisions in that particular year. I believe it was pre-COVID. I think it was 2018. Over 150,000 prospects were discovered and almost, well, over, almost 1,400, but over 1,300 responses to God's call into ministry or missions. And then there's other reasons under that. I'll let you read that little graphic, but I just wanted you guys to see how the Lord has used Vacation Bible School and how God is continuing to use Vacation Bible School to intentionally disciple children and to see children come to faith in Jesus Christ. So that's the second reason. Not only because of the impact that Vacation Bible School has had upon my own life, not only because of the impact that Vacation Bible School has had upon the life of others, and thirdly, I love VBS, because it was through Vacation Bible School that I was really encouraged to memorize Scripture. If we memorize the big Vacation Bible School verse at my home church, this year it's Ephesians 2.10. We, I don't know if you guys did this in Kentucky, okay? But in Alabama, we got to go into the pastor's grab bag. It was pretty cool. Had all kind of good, again, probably why I'm a diabetic today. But anyway, it was great back in the day. Uh, you could get a big, huge candy bar or whatever, and that was a really big deal. So this week, I'm going to have a grab bag. I don't have it with me this morning, but for all you teachers, mainly students, but for all you teachers too, volunteers, if you memorize the verse, you get to go into the pastor's grab bag. But here's our verse this week, Ephesians 2.10. We read it a little bit earlier. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Pray with me. Lord, as we walk through Ephesians, especially chapter 2, and especially verse 10, God, would you teach us some significant truths about yourself? And God, how that totally relates to us here in 2022. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I think it's important before we jump into verse 10, Ephesians 2.10, that we have an understanding of the context, the biblical context that surrounds Ephesians 2.10. So in Ephesians 1, beginning in verse 15, Paul Paul begins to refer to Gentiles, non-Jews, and he really prays referring to those Gentiles or non-Jews and then becoming part of God's family. And in chapter 2, what we're going to see is from this prayer, Paul's going to discuss how that happens. How does someone become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ? And in verses 1 through 3, he reminds the readers that they lived in alienation from God. In fact, the Bible uses language like we were dead in our trespasses and sins in which you once walked following the course of this world. This is our life before Christ. If you're here this morning and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then this is your life right now. You live in alienation from God. You are dead in your trespasses and your sins is what the Word of God says. And in verse 1 through 3, Paul's going to describe to these believers in Ephesus, to the readers, that they lived in alienation from God before Jesus Christ. But then in verses 4 through 10, Paul's going to describe the blessing or the blessings that believers receive as a result of being reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. And during the rest of chapter 2 that we're not going to look at this morning, verses 11 through 22, Paul is going to present a broader scope of God's reconciliation. How in Christ, one new humanity has been saved in Jesus that is composed of both Jews and non-Jews alike. So this morning from God's word in verse 10 specifically, we will learn that believers of the Lord Jesus Christ are God's great masterpiece created to do good works. So if you're a note taker, here's number one. Here's some thoughts about our passage of scripture. Number one, believers are a masterpiece. 
believers are a masterpiece. If you look at verse 10, Paul says, For we are his workmanship. And the New Testament word for workmanship is poema, which sounds a little familiar, right? It's, we derive our English word poem from that, from that New Testament word. And the word was originally used for any work of art, not, not just poetry. It was, it was used for any work of art, such as a statue, a song, an, an art, architect, architectural drawing, a painting, a poem. The word's used one other time in Scripture. It's only used twice in all of the New Testament. The other usage is found in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, where it refers to the material creation. So in other words, Paul's reminding there in Romans 1 that the heavens and the earth display the glory of God's material creation. But when we we turn our attention this morning to Ephesians chapter 2, we see this idea that it's the new creation. In other words, saved sinners. And this is important, church. Don't miss this. This means that our salvation is not a result of our effort or labor. Can I get an amen? There are still some people that call themselves Christians who believe that they are saved because of their good works. And all I can say to that is you have not studied God's Word. Because there's not a single person in this room, in this world, or ever that has ever been saved by their own good works. Can't happen. Notice what Paul says in the verses before that. Verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. It is not a result of works. So over and over in this chapter, Paul, especially these verses, Paul's trying to get across to these believers, you are not saved by your good works. If you are saved, it is only by the good work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And verse 8 says, For by grace you have been saved. Through faith, this is not your own doing. It's a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And all of that is is ground for verse 10. For we are his poema. For we are his workmanship. For we are his work of art. We are his statue. We are his masterpiece. I've seen beautiful Kentucky sunsets, haven't you? I really believe of all the sunsets that that we have seen the last three, or I've seen in my lifetime, the sunsets that we have seen in Kentucky over the last three years are some of the most beautiful. I've seen the pristine beaches on the Alabama and Florida Gulf Coast. I've been to other beaches, but nothing to me beats the beaches that we have on the Alabama and Florida Gulf Coast. I've seen the diverse, beautiful colors of the mild, deep Grand Canyon. I've seen the beautiful, stately, smoky mountains in Tennessee and North Carolina. And in all of this, I saw God through his beautiful handiwork. But in all those wonders, hear me and hear me well, I did not see his chief work. You know why? Because as as we, as his children, stand on display throughout all eternity, we will be recognized as God's masterpiece. His workmanship, his poema. And some of you, some of you may remember the painter Bob Ross. How many of y'all remember Bob Ross? You may, if you don't remember anything else, you may remember his hair. How about Bob Ross's hair, right? Some of you do not know who Bob Ross is. You need to YouTube a video of Bob Ross this afternoon. Bob was the creator and the host of the Joy of Painting. It was an instructional TV program that aired from 1983 to 1994. And Bob would paint and famously say, what? We don't make mistakes, just happy little accidents. Don't y'all remember that? Honestly, I was a kid through most of Bob Ross's uh, years on that program. And I'm going to tell you what I did. When I first saw it, I'd watch it for about a minute Some of y'all just go ahead and you did the exact same thing. I'd watch it for about a minute and I'd say, man, that is the biggest bunch of mess that he's putting scribbling on that canvas. And I'd turn the channel. And then I'd come back 10 or 15 minutes later 
And this guy would have an absolute masterpiece on that canvas. He would take a mess and he would make a total masterpiece out of it. I don't know how he did it. It was God-given skill and talent, no doubt, a gift from the Lord. But he could take an absolute mess and turn it into a masterpiece. There were no mistakes with Bob Ross, just happy little accidents. And I want you to know, Bob Ross does not hold anything on Jesus. God can turn any mess of a life in this room into his masterpiece. He turned my mess into a masterpiece. He can do it for you as well. How? How how does the Lord turn our mess into a masterpiece? How does he... How does he make a masterpiece out of us? He turns us, when we repent of our sins, he turns us from our self-centeredness, our sinful way of life, and he turns us by faith to Jesus Christ. Believers are a masterpiece. Number two, notice in verse 10, not only are believers a masterpiece, but they are a masterpiece created by the master. Now, that, that should go without saying, but I want to strongly emphasize what Paul is trying to tell these readers in verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. By the way, this is the third time in five verses that we see Paul emphasize this faith union with Jesus Christ that believers have. I want you to notice in verse 6, Paul said, "...and raises us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus." Verse 7, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us, don't miss this, in Christ Jesus. And then you get down to verse 10, and we are created as his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Three times in five verses we see this faith union with Jesus. It is only through Jesus Christ that lives that are marred and ruined by failure and sin can be made new. It's what Paul's trying to get across. He's reminding these Ephesian believers, you are not saved by your good works. You are saved by one good work, the good work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You are only saved in Christ Jesus And when you are saved in Christ Jesus, you are expected to live and to walk in good works. More about that in just a little bit. So salvation is creation, or really, salvation is re-creation. Paul talked about this to the believers in Corinth, right? For you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, The ultimate work of God, his masterpiece, is a human being who despite being dead in his or her transgressions and and sins has been made alive in Christ Jesus. That they are a new creation. And I want to submit something to you this morning and remind you of something that you are only saved through Jesus Christ. However, you, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, are still a work in progress. We're still a work in progress. Never forget that. In fact, some people have looked at it as there's three tenses to our salvation. He saved us. That happened in the past when we were born again, when we repented of our sins and we turned by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. At that moment, he justified us. Justification. Justified means to be declared righteous. Justification is the act of God whereby those who put their faith in Christ are declared righteous in God's eyes. He declares us righteous. He places upon us the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He justified us. He has saved us. And then he is saving us. This is sanctification. Sanctified means to set apart. This is the process by which believers are more and more separated from sin and become more and more dedicated to God's standard of righteousness. If you're here this morning and you're a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you need to realize that you are a work in progress. 
Progressive sanctification should be happening in your life. You should be becoming more like Jesus and less like yourselves until one day he will completely save us. He will glorify us. Glorification is the future perfection which will take place when the believer inherits his home in heaven and lives eternally in a new body. He has saved us. He is saving us. And he will completely save us. The great artist Michelangelo was once asked what he was doing as he chipped away at a shapeless rock. And he famously replied, I'm liberating an angel from this stone. That's what God is doing with us. We are in the hands of the great artist who created the universe out of nothing And he has never thrown away a rock on which he has begun his masterwork. Believers are a masterpiece created by the master. And then thirdly, we see in verse 10 that believers are a masterpiece created by the master for good works. Listen, no one will ever be saved by good works. No one, ever, not one. However, once we are saved and we have become God's masterpiece, his workmanship, we must work. We must work. This means, listen, we are not saved by good works. Listen to this. We are saved for good works. We are called to walk in good works. Works are even a sign that we belong to him. Our works are a sign that we belong to him and that we are his masterpiece. But don't miss that phrase, it's easy to skip over, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What does that mean, that God prepared beforehand? Honestly, when I first read it, it blew my mind. And one pastor, Kent Hughes, explains it this way. Each of us, listen to me. Or if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, all eyes on me. I don't want you to miss this. Each of us has an eternally designed job description, which includes the task, the ability, and the place to serve. Did you hear me? There's not to be anybody sitting on the bench in here. We are all to be in the game. Amen, brother? Every one of us. What's the good work? God has prepared it beforehand that you, you and I would walk in this good work. Every one of us. And whatever the task in which he has called you, you will be equipped for it as surely as a bird is capable of flight. God in his sovereignty, God by his providential hand, had good works in mind when he chose us for salvation. That blows my mind. God in eternity past, when he chose us for salvation, already had those good works for us planned out ahead of time. And he planned that we should walk in them. And these good works were designed in eternity past. They were fashioned for us by good God that we should walk in them continuously. So, this is interesting. The paragraph ends the way it began with our human walk or manner of life. Formally, go back to verse 1, Paul said, we walked in our trespasses and our sins in which the devil had entrapped us. But then you get to verse 10 and guess what? It's bookends. Call this an inclusio. It's a poetic, poetic device that's used throughout a lot in God's Word. Now we, those of us who were walking according to the old way of life, we, we walked in dead in our trespasses and sins. We have been made alive, though, in Christ Jesus. We walk in good works now, which God has prepared and eternally planned for us to do. And church, listen to me. All of this is because of Jesus. All of it. So, are you walking in good works? Let me give you three, and now I have a fourth one after the Supreme Court's decision this week. Four opportunities. 
here through Campbellsville Baptist Church to walk in good works. Number one, vacation Bible school this week at Campbellsville Baptist. You can serve. You can pray. You can help. You can clean up. Church, what a great opportunity for us to love on children and families in our church and community. We are to walk in good works. And God has given us an opportunity this week through Vacation Bible School. A second opportunity that I want to share with you is our backpack family ministry. We have 35 families with 105 children that we are feeding this summer. And church, I'm just going to be honest with you. We need food. Where's our committee? Miss Virginia's on there. Kim's here. Where else? Do we have any of our other committee members? We, we need more food. 35 families, 105 children. We need people to help. We need people to help. We need strong backs, don't we, Miss Kim? We, we need people to lift food and to pack boxes. We need your help. We We hope to help these children with clothing when it's time to go back to school in late August. Church, this is an opportunity for us to walk in good works. Let's step up. Let's do it. Let's minister to these 35 families. Let's love on these 105 children that the Lord has sent to us. If you you don't know where to start, see Miss Kim or Miss Virginia. We got two. They'd love to talk to you right after the worship service. And then we have a third opportunity, Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Ministry. Where's Amy? Amy, lift your hand. This is an opportunity. Listen, we are trying to take the gospel and food to children in our community, and we're trying to take the gospel to children in the world. And we pack shoeboxes in the fall. You say, man, the fall's a long way off. No, not really. (laughs) Amy's shaking her head. It's not that far. But we need your help. Not only do we need your help in the fall, we need your help by by bringing money now because it costs a lot to to ship those shoeboxes. But we want to ship those shoeboxes to the glory of God. We are to walk in good works. Sometimes people say, I don't know what to do. I just gave you three right there. You with me? This means yes, and this means no. We got Vacation Bible School. We got Backpack Children. We got Operation Christmas Child. There's a place for every person in this room to serve. Let's walk in good works, church. Let's do it. And I'm going to give you a fourth. We're very aware of the Supreme Court's decision this week to overturn Roe versus Wade. How do we respond to that as a church? I ran across, or actually Will posted it, I want to share it with you real quickly, an article by David Platt through Radical. It talks about how do Christians respond to the Dobbs decision. Let me give you four. Number one, praise God that for the first time in almost 50 years in our country, it is no longer seen as a constitutional right for people to take the lives of children in their mother's womb. We praise God. That's a work of the Lord. Now, I know some of you may not agree with that decision. I understand that. What I would submit is as followers of Christ, we always inform our decisions, what we do in life, and we filter it through the Word of God. All right? Now, I will say this, church. It is one thing for us to celebrate what, God, what we believe God has done in overturning Roe versus Wade. But if we don't come along aside, people in our community, and love women and commit our lives to families in our community, if we don't double our efforts when it comes to our crisis pregnancy center and people that are hurting, and I'm here to tell you they are hurting under the shadow of our steeple. Some of them don't have adequate food. Some of them don't have adequate clothing. And if we, Campbellsville Baptists and the surrounding churches in this area, if all we do is celebrate this decision and we don't redouble our efforts in loving on our community, listen to me, we are nothing more than hypocrites. Church, it's time for us to step up. Walk in good works. Love on our community. Love women with unwanted pregnancies who feel like abortion is their hope and 
and who feel like they just lost their hope when hope is found in Jesus. And we're to take Jesus to them. We're to commit our lives to families and churches in a fresh way to care for those with unwanted pregnancies. We are to proclaim the hope that is found in Christ alone. The creator who came to save us as a baby in a mother's womb. To love us, care for us, live for us, and die so that everyone who believes and hopes in him might have eternal life forever. We walk in good works, church. This is our opportunity. The opportunity's always been there. This is our opportunity to walk in good works. So are you walking in good works. What have we learned this morning? Believers of the Lord Jesus Christ are God's great masterpiece, created to do good works. I'm going to ask this morning, if you're participating in Vacation Bible School, if you're serving, volunteering, if you would stand. Stand with me. Downstairs and upstairs, this, this, these are many of our volunteers this week for VBS. Uh, our director is Cindy Chadwick. She has done an awesome job in preparing us for Vacation Bible School. I'm going to ask church family, if you would, y'all remain standing, those volunteers. And I'm going to ask if you would, let's pray. Let's commission these volunteers as we take the gospel. Good works to children and to families. Father in heaven, you have entrusted us with the gospel, the good news message of Jesus Christ, and we ask you for guidance as we teach the word of God to these precious children in our church and our community. We set apart all of these volunteers who will serve in Vacation Bible School this week. May they serve others empowered by your mercy and by your grace. Lord, give them strength. And Lord, give them energy, bless each volunteer and use them mightily for your glory and your kingdom. And Lord, use our director, Cindy Chadwick. Thank you for her heart. Thank you for her passion and excitement and give her wisdom as she leads us this week. And we pray this in the name above all names and all God's people said, amen. I mean, I'm going to ask the rest of everyone else if you will stand. Stand with these volunteers. And I close with this. If you are here this morning and you are far from God, I want to encourage you to repent and trust in Jesus by faith. If you're here and you're far from God this morning, He will save you. He will save you. He, if you will call upon the name of the Lord, He will save you. In just a few minutes, we're going to pray we're going to have some pastors that will be available. If God's speaking to your heart this morning, we invite you to come. But if you know Christ, if you're a follower of Jesus, remember this morning you are his masterpiece. You are his masterpiece. And you were created to walk in good works. Pray with me. Lord, thank you this morning for how your word is so clear Thank you for the beautiful reminder that we are his masterpiece. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. May we walk in them daily. Lord, may we love on our community, whether it's through Operation Christmas Child Shoebox Ministry, whether it's through the backpack ministry, whether it's through Vacation Bible School or whether it's loving on families right here in our backyard. Lord, may we love our community. May we walk in good works. Lord, for any man or woman or student in this room that is still dead in their trespasses and sins, Lord, may this morning they be confronted with their sinfulness and Lord, may they give their heart and their life to you, Jesus. And Lord, we know that you will save them for all of eternity. We pray this in the name above all names, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. So we invite you this morning. If you need someone to speak with, you need you don't know Jesus, we'll love to take walk you through God's word how you can be saved. Let's sing together and let's respond by faith to Jesus. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. And wonder how he could love a sinner condemned unclean, singing how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall it sins and my sorrows he made them his very own and he bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone singing how marvelous how wonderful and my Shall ever be how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. When with the ransomed in glory, his face I last shall see. God is good all the time. Amen. Hey, remain standing. I believe Pastor Will's going to come and have a few closing words. I do want to share this. 4 p.m. this afternoon, we're going to be prayer walking for Vacation Bible School. You can meet us downstairs in the fellowship hall. Please come. Please come. Let's pray. I know some of you may not. Your schedule will not allow you to volunteer and serve this week, but we can all pray. So join us this afternoon, 4 o'clock downstairs in the fellowship hall. And let's pray for Vacation Bible School as we begin tomorrow. Are y'all excited? Yeah, I'm excited too. Pastor Will, you close this out. As we close this morning, just wanted to uh, bring your attention to our 4th of July uh, picnic and gospel sing next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday afternoon, it's here, it's upon us. Uh, we're going to do that in the, in the gym this year, so it's going to be a little cool, going to be in some air conditioning, and so uh, we're going to do that and then move the people up here uh, for the gospel sing that happens at 3, and so you'll want to participate there. We're going to set the gym up Thursday afternoon around 2 o'clock, so once Vacation Bible School stuff has been torn down, we're going to go ahead and set the gym up for that for those people, so um, you know, you want to stay around and help with that. Uh, also, I, I happen to notice that in this little tear out, there, there's different days prayer that you can, you can offer up. Now, I, I challenged the teenagers while we were at camp 
to, to put their one, kind of who they've been praying for, on an alarm in their phone that whatever they were doing, they would stop and they would pray three times a day for the person that they wanted to see come to know Christ. Well, the same thing is true about these days here. We get caught up sometimes, get busy, and we forget to stop and pray for these. So about 9, 9.30, set an alarm on your phone with a, with a tagline of this prayer for Vacation Bible School. So even if you cannot be with us, that alarm will go off. It'll, it'll tell you, hey, I need to pray for VBS for specifically for this, for this day. And then that will allow you to, to, to stop pause a moment and offer up a prayer. It's so easy to do, um, and, and you can, I, I tell you, far the benefits far outweigh the not doing of that. And so if you would, just do that. Set that up in your phone. I, I showed my dad how to do this just a couple days ago. It's possible. Anybody can do this, all right? And so just, just do that for us. And then if, if you want to know more about our church and, and the exciting things that God is doing within our body, um, please scan that. Okay, it'll take you directly to where it'll, it'll send us an email. But if not, fill that out, drop it in a plate on the way out, and we would love to connect with you. All right? So bow with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just want to thank you, uh, Lord, for uh, Lord, the privilege to be a part of Vacation Bible School, to, to physically see those numbers that there are, there are over 70,000 children that come to know you. Lord, I just want to thank you for that. And Lord, I pray that as we go throughout this week that that we are praying for those that are serving, but also those that are receiving through our Vacation Bible School. Lord, allow the, those that are teaching, uh, those that are, are, are transporting students from one place to another, Lord, allow them to have your word on the tip of their tongue so that they're not only getting it as they are going from place to place, but Lord, they are also getting the gospel message in each room that's there. Lord, allow us to be that light. Lord, I pray that you just be with us, um, Lord, as we go out and as we invite our neighbors to come and to be a part of what God is doing here at Campbellsville Baptist Church. Lord, I pray that you just allow us to remain true to you and true to the gospel. Lord, just thank you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen.